Hello, I'm the Theorizer, and this is Nine, a rather terrifying looking movie. Like, I swear this film is only PG-13 because of the imagery. The concept itself is a quintillion times less creepy than Coraline, yet it receives a more age-restricted rating. Funny. But people seem to like this film. Based off of the Shane Acker 2005 short film with the same name, this 2009 feature film gained a large fan base. But it was released a few months after Coraline, and was also released by Focus Features. But Coraline seemed to take all of that year's glory. Nine was released on September 9th, 2009, and received mixed reviews, but it was generally pretty liked. And so, upon the obsessive request of you guys, I'm going to cover this film today. You know, surprisingly for a film like this, there isn't a whole lot to theorize on, but there is a wicked backstory that the film doesn't touch upon that incorporates real-life references, historical accuracies, and an actual Facebook page where a protagonist publishes plot points. Oh yeah, they went all out with this one. So let's quickly begin with a recap of the film's story. A post-apocalyptic world is void of any life except for nine ragdolls granted with souls known as Stitch Punks. Their names are uncreatively known as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. They are all led by one, and the only thing left on Earth other than themselves is a very creepy looking robotic cat beast whose goal is to kill them all. But when the ninth one awakens and meets one through eight, he finds an interesting looking talisman. I don't really want to explain the whole movie, but basically he finds the others and he accidentally uses the talisman to activate a massive robot. The robot creates other deadly robots to kill the stitch punks. The massive robot gets the talisman and starts using it to suck the souls out of the dolls. Desperate for answers, Nine learns that the scientist who created the dolls also created the robot, and Nine finds a message left for him. In the message, the scientist shows Nine how to use the talisman. Then, Nine gets it from the robot, sucks the souls back, kills the robot, and sets the souls free, causing life to rain down and fix the planet. So generally, a pretty cool story, but if you're curious and want more like me, then you start to analyze scenes frame by frame to find clues, and guess what? I read every post made by the scientist on Facebook, scanned through every animated newspaper in the whole movie, and any time there was writing or text, I paused and wrote it down as a clue. And you won't believe it, but the film uses random text as background filler. Or do they? Let me elaborate. If you watch the movie, you can quite easily figure out the pre-movie plot. A scientist created a machine that was as intelligent as himself, but then a chancellor took it and forced it to create machines of war. But then, the machines turned on the humans and used a poisonous gas to kill everything. That same scientist that created the machine then uses a tiny magic device to divide up his soul into nine dolls, leaving the ninth one, the trinket, to bring life back to the world. And then the movie happens, they destroy the big machine, and they bring life back to the world. Okay, so that's alright, but let's get into the real interesting secrets. What I mean by that, of course, is all of the intriguing Easter eggs I came across. You see, the thing is, this movie is really good at leaving Easter eggs in newspapers. Look at this one, for example. Oh, and sorry about the quality, but my Mac won't let me screenshot the film, so I had to take an actual picture. But upon close inspection, this newspaper is discussing Nober the new and improved fire retardant. They talk about how if you apply no burn to any interior fabric, it will stop a fire from spreading. Very cool Easter eggs. So I went online to research no burn and found the company online. I hadn't heard about them until now, but apparently they are indeed a company that specializes in fire retardants. The newspaper then talks about someone named Tetraalt and how they are associated with no burn. They apparently tested no burn on wood at Keem Lumber, a lumber company. I looked up those newsprint paragraphs word for word and found an identical copy of what was written as a no-burn PDF. So is it all just filler text? I mean, the same repeat appears here too, or is it all something more? But something is very strange here. The newspaper's name is the Star Gazette, which is a real-life New York newspaper, but what is very bizarre is that the newspaper's date is Saturday, May 16th, 1930. But the problem is, none of these products were around back then, 
And another problem is that May 16th, 1930 was actually on a Friday. But May 17th, 1930 was a Saturday. And on that day, a lot of stuff went down, revolving around the World Wars, such as the Young Plan, but more on that in a moment. But before we continue with the newspaper clues, I want to address the coolest thing this film did to promote. They gave the scientist his own Facebook page, and on it, the scientist posted updates of his technological achievements leading up to the movie's release date. So cool! And all of his posts reveal even more about the story before the movie. More about the machine, more about the Chancellor, and more about the Stitch Punks. He also talks about the Great World War, a raging war that lasted 10 years. He discusses over the course of 70 posts the full pre-story timeline of Nine. And yes, I read every single post. It goes like this. A scientist likes working on interesting machinery. He is appointed by a country's chancellor to go through with creating an artificially intelligent machine that he is calling B-R-A-I-N, or Binary Reactive Artificially Intelligent Neurocircuit. After many posts where he talks about the deadlines and developmental progress, he explains how the chancellor is allowing him to share some of his research to Facebook. So he shares some concept art for his machine. He then begins to talk about how he has dreams of alchemy symbols, but he just dismisses it as something he read. He then touches up his project to show the Chancellor. During this time, he also researches the elemental symbols he envisioned. Those specific symbols were related to intellectual transfer. Something perfect for his machine. He wonders why his brain suddenly thought of those symbols right at the time of need, but he yet again dismisses it. Then the Chancellor arrives to check up on the machine's progress. He was furious to find that the machine was not yet working, and he threatened to cut the funding for the project if the scientist didn't hurry up. The scientist checked alchemy books for more answers. He tried new methods to speed up production, and then, over a week later, the Chancellor meets with him again, this time pleased with the progress. The machine reaches out to shake his hand, and the Chancellor smirks approvingly. The scientist is happy and continues his production. He then constantly posts a link to his laboratory, which is basically just the Nine website. Unfortunately, as of right now, it's inaccessible, and I have to keep using Facebook clues. Anyways, the scientist goes on about how he used to be a toy maker, and now that he's a scientist, he's actually a bit afraid of what technology can do. At one point, he even leaves his machine alone, and it starts tinkering with little tools to create itself a new limb. The scientist continues production still. The Chancellor starts putting up war propaganda posters all over town, but then an anti-technology group called the Rebels starts defacing the posters, saying things like resist, targeting the Chancellor, the machine, and the scientist. What happened next was protesting riots, arrests, and injuries, as well as a concerned scientist just trying to help. The scientist then completes brain, and only final testing remains. But then, without any warning, the Chancellor's men storm into the scientist's lab and steal brain for the Chancellor's own testing. The scientist says that they do not know what they are messing with, but they don't listen. Later, they take the scientist from his lab and confiscate several vital documents. The Chancellor is doing something much bigger and more dangerous than he thinks. Then newspapers and posters go out, advertising the fabrication machine, a machine that will create new machines in its own image. The scientist is now fiercely worried. He then admits that the way he gave the machine artificial intelligence was by using those alchemy symbols to transfer his own intellect into the robot. But the robot isn't meant to feel empathy or logic, so this is all bad news. Protests are increasing. The scientist is being heavily monitored, and the machine gets some super sweet new upgrades. This is all terrible. Several propaganda posters are being defaced, just as fast as more and more are going up. Then, several machines are suddenly unveiled to the public, huge 30-foot-tall war beasts created by the fabrication machine. Then, large posters telling people to fight at war go up. They have 30-foot-tall war machines on them, with the date September 9th, 2009 written on them. I can only assume that that'll be the day of a new war. 
The vicious chancellor turned dictator is now threatening poor countries with the machines. These countries are still recovering from the previous 10 year war and the chancellor sends out deadly gas bombs killing millions instantly. Propaganda posters are now saying pay the price for freedom. The machine is being overworked. It is soon going to change its priorities which would be bad. War machines are now going rogue and accidentally killing their own men. War rages outside and the scientist gets an idea to yet again turn to the dark sciences. But he needs his research which was confiscated by the government. He manages to get it back and begins a new task. Meanwhile, the fabrication machine is prioritizing and begins killing factory workers. The fabrication machine is about to snap and so the scientist must work fast with his new task. The machine is now killing everybody in the city and the scientist blames himself, but he shouldn't be. The chancellor makes a public message and in it blames everybody but himself. And finally, the scientist successfully alters the device he used to transfer his intelligence, turning it into a little talisman infused with the alchemaic symbols. Brain is multiplying his creations and so the scientist now begins to use the talisman. After intense amounts of work, the scientist uses the talisman to take a portion of his soul and infuse it into a tiny doll. He calls it One. He worries that his old body won't be able to take such tasks as soul sucking, but he continues. As thousands and millions of more people are being killed, the scientist develops eight more dolls, talks about how they act on Facebook, and sets them all out into the world. He then uses all he has left and infuses it into one final ninth one. Then the movie begins. Well, that right there should have been a movie. Those 70 Facebook posts were amazing. And only a few months ago, the profile pic updated. The first activity on the Facebook page in years. Hmm, does this mean a possible sequel? Maybe, but for now I need to know, when and where does this all take place? We can accurately assume that the Great World War they are referring to is World War I, if the movie does take place in 1930. But in this universe, World War I lasted 10 years. Then, beginning in 1930, was the age of the machines. If these newspaper dates aren't filler, then this film takes place in 1930. However, the propaganda posters advertise 999, and the scientist's Facebook page posts were directly posted on specific dates. So does it take place in 1930 or 2009? Let's come back to that in a moment. So let's start with where. Now this part was fun. <laughs> If your kind of fun is hours of historical research, ugh, the frustration. Let's do this for 2009 and 1930. If we look at the countries that are European dictatorships in both eras, our list of possible countries are as follows. If it takes place in 2009, it could be Belarus. That's it. As far as I know, and as far as my research went, the only European country that still follows dictatorship is Belarus. Belarus has literally been called Europe's last dictatorship by many historians and journalists, so that was easy. But over on the 1930 side, the research becomes more difficult. But I managed. In 1930, Germany, Italy, Spain, Russia, Austria, Greece, Poland, and Portugal were all dictatorships. So there we have it. But it's not enough. We need more narrowing down. Well, we know that the country has a chancellor, so what countries had chancellors? Well, here the most excellent thing happens. Belarus never had a chancellor in 2009, and this downright eliminates 2009, proving that it has to be 1930. And applying the chancellor fact to these countries, we narrow the heck out of this. Spain, Russia, Portugal, and Greece never had chancellors, and Italy and Poland never had this kind of chancellor. We are left with Germany and Austria, two 1930 European accented dictatorship chancellor countries. And look at this. Wikipedia even agrees with my chancellor analysis, but we're still left with a tricky decision. Fortunately, I have something to break the tie. In the 30s, the Nazis rose to power. They were a big deal. And look up anything to do with chancellors and Germany is like the first thing. And so we have a solid answer. Nine takes place in Germany in the 1930s. All of the Hitler symbolism makes sense. This chancellor is so similar to Hitler. 
goals to take over the world, backfiring plans, obscene amounts of propaganda, perfect timing, defining symbols, etc. Now, remember, this guy is not Hitler. But what I am saying is that this film is either symbolizing Hitler or is showing an alternate route for World War I. A route where the war lasted 10 years, the world is poor, machines take over, and only dolls remain. And what was it I mentioned before? Oh yeah, the Young Plan. It was a plan that went into effect on May 17, 1930. That was for settling German reparations debts after World War I. All of the timing is there. This government is getting lots of funding for science, something this plan would allow for. And that's that. What I want to do now is answer a pretty big question. Why does this machine want to kill all of the Stitch Punks? Well, actually, it doesn't want to kill them. Notice how all of the machine's creations go out to capture the Stitch Punks, to bring them to the machine. They don't ever actually kill them. Look at the seamstress. It kneels before the fabrication machine with its prize, so that the machine can soul suck it. The machine first wakes up when it sucks up Two's soul, so my thoughts are, it needs a soul to live. That's why it wants the dolls. They are the scientist's soul. He is the scientist's brain. When Nine sucks all of the stitch punks out of this fabrication machine, it blows up and dies. It needs a soul to live. I guess if you really think about it, technically, if the fabrication machine has the scientist's intellect and his fully recombined soul, he would be the scientist. And that is a huge revelation. Nine was whatever was left of this guy's soul, or in other words, the rest of him. A lot of him. Everything else the scientist had. And so, if this machine got a hold of Nine, it would all be over, as Nine has the most soul. Two talks about the extraordinary amount of thought that went into Nine's design. After all, this was the scientist. So that's pretty cool, but I do want to bring up another point. I tried doing something very tedious, but didn't get too far. I tried translating this book and all of the alchemy symbols inside of it. And looking at it, <laughs> there was just too much to do. And some of the symbols weren't even real, so it was just a pointless quest. I'm sure I could learn much, much more about this if I could just read it. But for now, I'm stuck. Maybe in the future, I will return to translating it once more. And that? was all I figured out. The date, place, motives, connections, and easter eggs. Now here is the full story start to finish. Okay, here we go. A 1900s German toy maker is unsatisfied with his job and wants to apply his knowledge to bigger and better things. He quits his job to pursue science. During his time as a scientist, a ten-year-long world war rages, making all countries poor afterwards. Slowly, the world recovers, with Germany in the lead. Later, as a scientist, the man tinkers with machinery and even artificial intelligence. He begins to create an AI machine. In 1930, Germany's vicious war-crazy chancellor funds his work for receiving its benefits in return. The young plan may even assist this. But the Chancellor gets impatient and angry. To speed up the progress, the scientist uses alchemy witchcraft to transfer his knowledge into the machine. The Chancellor is pleased and confiscates his work for his cruel needs. He forces the robot to build machines of war, and he then uses them to get revenge on the very poor countries in a similar way that Hitler retaliated. Unaware of the catastrophic repercussions of AI, the Chancellor continued until the machine snapped. It began destroying everyone alive with deadly gas until only the scientist remained. To keep life going, he resorts to the dark arts one final time to split up his soul into nine stitch punks. He lets them all go and dies. All that remains in the entire world are the nine stitch punks and one final robot. The fabrication machine has powered off, most likely from being overworked. But accidentally, the most soulful stitch punk enabled the machine to suck a soul and live once again. After losing many stitch punks, they defeat the machine with its own talisman and they set the soul's lives upon the world, bringing back life once again. 
Isn't that pleasing? I really hope so. I hope I didn't go too fast, but it's pretty difficult sometimes. Let's see what we have accomplished today. I figured out where and when this mysterious movie takes place. I figured out the truth about what Brain really wants, and I analyzed the full timeline of the movie. <sighs> this was mentally exhausting to cover, but I don't get a break. And I don't need one. So I guess it's now time to resort to intense physics, which is basically my cooldown work. <laughs> See you guys later.